Well, so far we've been using IRB like a calculator. And that's all well and good, but we know that one of the things that makes computers so valuable to us is that they can remember things for us. Like our name, in case we forget what it is. Uh, in the case of computer programming languages, this is done with a variable. You put the name of what you want to assign to on the left. The name can be almost anything. There are certain rules about what a name can and can't contain. A lot of programming languages use the underscore character. Ruby is one of those. And you type the name and IRB will evaluate it and give you the answer back. In this case it says this var variable is equal to this value. You can use these in an expression anywhere that you would use uh, a string or a number, whatever it is you've stored. Like so. Now these are called variables because they can vary. Just because you've stored a value once doesn't mean that that is the value it will have for the rest of time. And we've given it a different value. There are practical reasons why you would do this, of course. Now this is going to look a little strange to anybody who's done algebra, because obviously what's on the left does not equal what's on the right. But this equal sign doesn't really mean is equal to. It means becomes equal to, or sometimes it's pronounced gets. So sum gets sum plus seven. Whatever sum used to contain, the computer takes it, adds seven to it, and stores it back in sum, overwriting what was there before. Which means you can do this over and over again, and you get an accumulated value. Say sum is now equal to 35. Now, if you remember, we said that Ruby is an object-oriented language. That means the number 7 is an object, as is the number 14, 21, 28. The string Arthur Dent is an object. The string Hello, my name is Arthur Dent is another object. Until we started talking about variables, there was no way to illustrate this. But here's an example. Down case means render it in all lowercase. So we now have Arthur Dent in all lowercase. The original string Arthur Dent with uppercase is still stored there. But there's another call you can make with an exclamation mark on the end which actually changes the object in question. This is telling the string I want you to lowercase yourself. And now you see that Arthur Dent is lowercase in the variable name. We haven't changed what name refers to. We've told the object that name refers to to change itself. There's a subtle distinction there, but it'll become more clear as we work with object-oriented code. Another thing to point out is that there's no reason why you can't do this. Just because this, uh, a variable used to store a string doesn't mean it always has to. In this case, I've changed it, so now it points to a number. If we go back and run this again, you can see it's now using the number here instead of the name. Ruby is a language that is what we call not, not strongly typed. Ruby doesn't care whether you're going to store a number or a string or a boolean or some other type in a variable. It'll let you store pretty much anything there. There's another thing we should point out at this point, which is a lot of times a variable will contain the special value nil. Being an object-oriented language, everything in Ruby is an object, including nothing. And so nothing has to have a name, and the name is nil. You'll see this from time to time. Uh, for example, you've already seen it when we did puts hello world in IRB, it prints hello world on the string, but then it also prints nil underneath. This is simply saying that the puts command is all about producing some output on the screen. It doesn't really return a value the way 3 plus 3 does. That returns the value 6. Puts doesn't return any value, and so what you get back is nil. So we're going to see this more often in the future.